hi everyone and welcome to today's video. So today's video is a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make the Fleur Pinafore. So before we get into the tutorial, you obviously need to purchase and download the Flirt Pinafore, which you can get in the box below. You obviously need to print it off, choose your fabric, get it all ready. The pattern comes in sizes 6 to 22, and it's okay for the confident beginner. I'm going to show you how to add side seam pockets, how to do gathering, and also to line a sleeveless bodice using the burrito method, which is super easy, and I'm gonna take you through it all step by step. I am using a lovely woolen plaid fabric today, and I have got just over three meters of fabric, so I've got plenty to play with. And my fabric is wider than the recommended width of 54 inches. Mine is about 60 inches wide. So I'm gonna use the full width of my fabric for the bottom tier, so I get a little bit more gather on my bottom tier. So you can do that too if you've got that wider fabric. Also, if you've got a narrower fabric, don't worry if you haven't got a fabric that's as wide as the 54 this is for the bottom tier what you can do is open out your fabric and cut the bottom tier on a single layer of fabric to the width of your pattern piece for the for the lower tier on a single piece of fabric we need to cut them out four times and then don't forget to add a centimetre seam allowance on either end because obviously you're going to sew them back together to create the long piece for your bottom tier so you can do that also so a narrow fabric not a problem but without any further ado let's get over to the tutorial so i'm just laying out my fabric and i'm just cutting the measurements for the top tier and the bottom tier purely because i've made so many of them i know what the measurements are for me so i, I haven't used the pattern pieces and yet as per normal without fail my feline shall we say companion mm, is come to supervise so bear with me here he does eventually get bored but if you've got a cat you know it's impossible to move a cat until he wants to be moved anyway so he did eventually get bored and off he went so i'm just cutting out my top tiers and my bottom tiers and like i said in the intro i'm using the full width of my fabric because i don't want to waste that extra few inches mine is 60 inches wide and i'm just going to add that extra width to my bottom tier just to make the frill slightly a little bit more gathered but you don't have to do that at all and because i'm working with a plaid i'm not going to cut my pieces out on a fold i'm just going to trace around the first half and cut it out then flip it over onto the other half and then cut it out because of the pattern matching and what have you And the same with the back piece, do exactly the same. Next up I'm going to mark my darts for the front of my main fabric and also the front of my lining. So once all my darts are pinned and ready, I'm going to put them to one side. I'm going to work on the skirt first of all 
so I'm going to overlock, neaten the edges of my pocket bags and the side seams of both the top tee skirt and the bottom tee skirt. Now if you don't have an overlocker, obviously use your neatening method that you use, zigzag stitch or pinking shears or whatever method you use. So once I've done that, I'm going to line up my pocket bags right sides together with the notch there on the side of the top tee skirt. So match up your the top of your pocket bag with that notch and pin them in place right sides together. Make sure your pocket bag is facing downwards. And once we've pinned all four onto the side seams there, matching up those notches, we're going to go to the machine and stitch them in place. And we're going to use approximately six millimeter seam allowance, not the one centimeter, just for this section of the instructions. And then we're going to all under stitch there. As you can see, once you've stitched your pocket bags in place, we're going to flip the pocket bag out over and keep the seam allowance facing the pocket bag and then just do an understitch of a few millimetres away from the edge there on the pocket bag. And that makes it all nice and neat. And next we're going to place right sides together, matching up the pocket bags on the sides, pin in place and then we're going to sew it all together. So once everything is pinned in place, we're going to go to the machine, one centimetre seam allowance now throughout and we're going to sew everything together. So sewing from the top, work your way all the way down to one centimetre just below the pocket there. Leave your needle down, pivot, turn, continue to stitch all the way around the pocket bags, all the way around. Keep going over to back onto the skirt piece by a centimetre, needle down, pivot and sew to the bottom repeat this for both sides and once we've done that we're going to come and press those side seams. I'm just going to snip into each corner there just so I can then press those seams open. Just a little snip into each section there just below and above the pocket. Not through the stitching or anything just in the seam allowance just so you can get a nice neat press. And obviously we're going to press at every stage as we go along. So once we've done that, our top skirt is going to put to one side and we're going to now work on the bottom skirt. So I'm just going to place right sides together and pin the two side seams and then stitch in place using our one centimetre seam allowance. So I'll give everything a good press. Moving on to the next stage. So we've now got our bottom tier stitched at the side seams. We're going to overlock the bottom and then we're going to press under two centimeters all the way along the bottom edge. So you can see I've overlocked the edge there and I'm just pressing under two centimeters all the way along and pinning in place. And then I'm just going to go to the machine and sew the hem. And once I've stitched the hem, I'm then going to do two rows of gathering stitch along the top of the bottom tier now. As you can see, I'm changing my stitch length to my longer stitch. And I'm just going to, working from the centre front notch, I'm just going to work two rows of gathering stitch, working from the centre front notch to the centre back notch, then I'm stop, quit my thread and start again. So I have like two two lots of um, stop and starts there to pull when I come together so you're not gathering one long piece. And I'm just using my handy little tool there, I absolutely love that tool. Okay so there we go, I've got my stitching done and I'm going to do the same for the top tier now. I'm going to put two rows of gathering stitch on the top tier 
of the skirt piece along the top there, the top edge, not the bottom edge. So once we've done that, we're then going to place these two tiers together, right sides together. So I'm just marking with my pin because you will have a notch as well on the bottom of your top tier. So the bottom edge of your top tier and you're going to match up those notches with the notches on the bottom tier. And we're also going to match up our side seams together. And then once we've done that, we're going to pull our gathering threads so the bottom tier fits the top tier. So once I've got my centre front notches pinned together and my side seams pinned together, I can then see how much I need to pull the gathering to fit in each section there. So just gently pull on your threads until it's gathered enough to fit in the top tier there you can see and just adjusting my gathers so they're nice and neat and even and then I just like to anchor my thread with a pin because nine times out of a ten if I tie it in a knot then I have to adjust it and then undo that knot. So I never I never knot my threads, I just anchor it with a figure of eight round the end of a pin. And if I need to adjust it, I just take the pin out and my threads are loose again. So I'm just gonna do that all the way along for four for the bo for all the four sections there. Just adjust my gathers so they're nice and even and neat throughout the whole of that bottom tier. And once everything's pinned in place, you guessed it, we're gonna to go to the machine and we're gonna stitch it all together, one centimeter seam allowance. And then once I've done that, I'm then gonna neaten all the way around that edge to finish that bottom tier. All I've got to do now is pull out any gathering threads that you can see from the outside, just pull them out and then that is the bottom part of the pinafore finished for the moment. So we're going to put that to one side and we're going to work on the bodice pieces now. So I've got my back, my front and the same with my linings. So first things first, sew those darts that we've already pinned earlier on. So sew all your darts and then once we've stitched them we're going to press them and press the darts downwards. And then we are then going to pin our shoulder seams together. So I'm just giving everything a quick press as you can see. And with right sides together, we're going to pin our shoulder seams together. So pin the lining shoulder seams together and then pin the fab main fabric shoulder seams together. And then we're going to sew across those shoulder seams only, one centimetre seam allowance, then neaten all those edges. So give those shoulder seams a nice good press and then we're going to place our lining to the main fabric. So with right sides together and matching up your centre front notch on the neckline, your centre back 
notch on the neckline and your two shoulder seams match them all up pin all the way around should match up nice and neatly and evenly and we're going to sew one centimeter seam allowance and once we have done that we are then going to press our lining away from the main bodice fabric with the seam allowance facing the lining just quickly snipping the seam allowance there so it makes it easy when we turn it over I'm just going to press it all with the like I said before the seam allowance underneath the lining because we're going to do some under stitching to make the lining sit nice and neatly on the other side so once we press that we're going to take it to the machine and we're just going to under stitch a couple of millimeters away from the edge with the seam allowance facing under the lining there as you can see and just a couple of millimeters in from the edge on the lining do our under stitching all the way around the under stitching just keeps the lining nice and neat and stops it from flipping over or flipping through uh, onto the right side when you're wearing it it's just a lovely neat finish so next we're ready for the burrito method so place your bodice with your fabric facing upwards and your armholes at the bottom at the top and just going to roll roll up from the bottom to the top and you're going to flip down your main fabric and then flip under the lining and then you're just going to pin as you can see me there and you can see you've got the right sides facing because you've got the seams you can see the seams of the shoulders the right side of the seam so you're going to pin those shoulder seams together and then everything should neatly pin along right sides together and just as you're pinning make sure you're not catching any part of that bodice inside you only want to be sewing through those two fabrics there the two out uh, edge of the fabric so everything else will be tucked in like a like a sausage roll type of thing and you're just going to stitch and you're not going to stitch the um, side seams you're just going to stitch from the underarm seam as you can see me there leaving those side seams free and just as you're stitching along just make sure you're not stitching through anything else apart from those two layers of fabric there everything else should be neatly tucked inside and then once you've done that snip your curves and then just put your hand inside and miraculously if you've never done this before just pull it through and your bodice will pull all the way through just keep pulling pull 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 and there you will now see that you've got lovely neatly encased armhole without any raw edges showing that's a brilliant method and I'm just going to give it a press and again with our seam allowance facing towards the lining and we're going to do some under stitching you can't under stitch very far purely because of the way the, the nature of the way it's stitched but you can under stitch uh, as, as far as you can get your, your sewing needle in on your machine so you can see here I can only get so far without catching anything else and I've got my seam allowance facing again towards the lining and I'm just doing an under stitch again a couple of millimeters away from the edge and the same for the other side then you can only go so far and then you've got to stop just can't get your machine all the way through but that's fine and you just give it a press and it will all press lovely and neatly and no lining will show I'm just going to repeat this for the other side so we're going to put our bodice down again with the stitch side at the bottom and the raw edges at the top and roll 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 and then take your main fabric flip and then pin those two pieces together because it's now right sides together again and again with the same piece at the other side and then get your shoulder seams and they'll be right sides together pin it there and then you will find everything else will just pin along nice and easily and neatly and we're just going to do exactly the same on this side one centimeter seam allowance make sure there's nothing in the way of those two layers of fabric so if you need to just poke your finger in and just push it back out the way and stitch along again one centimeter seam allowance take your time just just make sure as I say you're not going through any other layers of fabric you're not catching that bodice as you're doing it and then snip your curves put your hand inside and pull it through and then you've completed your burrito method on both sides of your bodice and we're just going to finish with a press again and do some more under stitching 
on this side like we did on the other side. So just give everything a nice press and you will have a lovely neatly stitched bodice with all your seams encased. So now we're just going to sew the side seams now, right sides together, so matching up the seam there. So just match up that seam and then with your raw edges together just pin and we'll repeat this on the other side obviously and then we're just going to stitch the side seams one centimeter seam allowance and then finish off with our neatening method. Whilst I'm at the machine sewing the side seams, I'm then, I'm then also going to neaten the edge of my lining, the bodice, the lining there, the edge, the raw edges, because they're starting to fray. Okay, so now it's ready to put the bodice to the skirt. I'm just marking with my pins my notches so I can ma match up the centre front of the bodice with the centre front of the skirt and the same with the centre back and then I'll also match up the side seams. And I'm just pulling my gathering threads just until it roughly matches the width of the bodice and I'll just do that for all four sides, all four sections there of my gathering. So I just pull, 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 just adjust the gathers and then obviously I can adjust this once I've got it pinned in place. So with right sides together now and raw edges matching of the bodice only, not the lining. Leave the lining loose, matching up your side seams, pin those side seams, match up your centre front pins as you can see and then if you need to adjust your gathers, adjust them now. And then once you're happy with everything and it's all gathered neatly and evenly throughout, pin in place and then we're going to go to the machine and stitch and then neaten and we're almost complete. So I'm just going to stitch at one centimetre seam allowance. I just, I like to adjust my gathers as I'm sewing sometimes so I just, you know, adjust if you need to. Obviously take your pins out as you go and then finish off with neatening that edge. And then all that's left to do now is pull out any gathering threads and then decide how you're going to finish off your bodice. Now you can either just leave it as it is with the edge overlocked like in place or you can turn under a centimetre and pin it down to the seam allowance of the skirt. But there's full instructions on how to do that in the written instruction booklet. And that's it, you've completed your Fleur Pinifar. I hope you enjoyed making the flirt pinny for with me. I hope you enjoyed the burrito method. Let me know in the comments box below if you have any problems whatsoever. And if you want to see a lot more detail about how I matched up the plaids, then check out this video, which will give you lots more detail. And I'll see you on my next sewing video.